all right and welcome back everyone in this video we we're gonna switch from multivariable calculus to ordinary differential equations okay so we're making some progress now we're gonna talk about some ODEs all right now the specific subtopic of this video is gonna be boundary value problems boundary value problems and if you want to sound real pre pretentious if you want to sound like a real pretentious professor you can just use bvps same thing same exact thing boundary value problems all right now okay there are mainly two types uh, when we're trying to categorize uh, you've probably heard initial value problems okay you've probably heard what initial value problems are if you've taken chances are if you've taken an undergraduate level differential equations class you have seen i'm not saying you understood i'm saying you have seen or heard these terms before but what do they mean what exactly is i mean how are these two how is this differential equation different from this equation all right how is for example let me give you another example this differential equation how is this differential equation different from how is the differential equation on the uh, well actually hold on let's make it even more similar how is the differential equation on the right this one different than the differential equation how are the left and right different sorry if i'm being too dyslexic here all right please um forgive me for that so all right so i mean we know that both have different indep different independent variables but the main difference is that these the equations on the left are varying with time i hope you can see that the variation is with respect to time whereas on the right side let me switch some colors for you guys oops um yeah i mean that should work whereas on the right side as you can see your variation is with respect to a space variable x is your position variable space position same thing so for initial value problems for initial value problems they're written on initial value problems are described using time domain they're described using they act on a time domain so all of these equations are time dependent all right we have time dependent variables on the left hand side let me just uh, update it here time dependent all right whereas on the right side we have our um, our dependent variables our dependent variables depend on space so yeah so i'm gonna call them space dependent and these are not um i need to warn you these are not the formal mathematical these are not the formal mathematical terminologies that i'm using here so i'm just going to add quotation marks initial value problems are time dependent whereas space dependent uh, boundary value problems are space dependent all right time versus space that's the main uh, that's the main dif distinction so time domain whereas you have space domain here and just one note i have a uh, you you guys some of you might be wondering i have an x here but what if i have y or z or what if i have a r or theta in cylindrical coordinates exact same thing this right here if i were to write this as d square c c a of y dy square it is understood it is understood that y itself is a space parameter y itself is a uh, y belongs to the space domain all right whereas t time belongs to the time domain all right so now there will be some equations like schrodinger's equation that are both that are both initial value and boundary value problems so there are unsteady state problems with spatial variation that are that fall into both categories but at an undergraduate level especially in an engineering under, at an undergraduate level engineering class you it, it's highly unlikely that you would see that so we're just gonna keep our initial value problems separate from our boundary value problems at least when we're talking about analytical solutions oh one last thing for initial value problems we're gonna need 
initial conditions initial conditions okay so how is my what does my variable look like let me actually squash this down i have this example i'm just going to squeeze it down you didn't see that you did not see that okay so you're going to need initial conditions you want to know that how your dependent variable in this case let's say the ca in the first equation what's its value at time t equals zero you usually need an initial condition but it can be okay but even if even if you know the condition at a certain other time you can still predict the trajectory okay usually it's initial condition whereas in the boundary value problems you need boundary conditions we're gonna dedicate a separate video to boundary conditions since so many people have issues with these boundary conditions so yeah i want to know my this time i would like to know my concentration my ca at a certain length i would like to know my temperature for example at a certain value at a certain length those are the boundary conditions all right and yeah um moving on I'm, i just wanted to give you an example of how a boundary value problem is going to look like this right here is represents my domain okay my space domain and the uh, governing equation the governing equation is let me just write that for you the governing equation is d square u of x dx squared equals zero and this some of you might uh, if you've already taken heat and mass transfer you would know that this is the uh, final result of a steady state conduction or steady state diffusion in a solid without any generation terms so some of you already know this and these are my boundary conditions these are my boundary conditions okay bc boundary conditions all right so solving this differential equation is actually not that hard if you've taken a calculus class you just have to your result is going to look something like this if you integrate this twice you're going to get c1 x plus c2 so now you have two constants you have to evaluate two constants okay after integration you get two constants since you have two constants of integration of integration you're going to need two boundary conditions all right and a shortcut way uh, a good trick to predict that is to just look at the order of the derivative the highest order of the derivative okay so this is a second order derivative the order of derivative the highest order of derivative the highest order of space derivative spatial derivative i think that's the right term i'm just gonna put quotations there spatial derivative gives you the number of bcs gives you the number all right this is becoming longer than i expected sorry the gives you the number of required boundary conditions all right so for a second order system you need two boundary conditions all right so yeah and why do we need two boundary conditions once again we have two constants of integration c1 and c2 and in order to evaluate c1 and c2 you're gonna plug in what happens at x equals zero and what happens at x equals l so a good understanding of boundary value problems can really help your can really help you in your study of transport phenomena so once again boundary value problems sometimes known as bvps like that's what that's the term that mathematicians and physics students like to throw around so time dependent initial value problems are time dependent whereas boundary value problems are space dependent okay and uh, of course since they're one is time dependent one is going to be acting on the time domain the other is space dependent the other one is going to be going to act on the space domain i hope you guys see that one needs initial conditions and the other needs boundary conditions there are however examples like schrodinger's equation that are both an initial value problem and a boundary value problem i'm not going to discuss that here but you guys can check it out all right example I, this is the domain um let me just uh just for completion's sake let's uh draw a coordinate system here all right x is positive to the right and y is positive 
upwards. And yeah, this is where I'm starting, x equals zero and x equals L. All right, good. So the domain, the domain is the region where your equation applies. But just to give you the terminologies, domain, what does domain mean? The region, the region where your governing equation applies. Region where governing equation, governing equation applies. In this case, we had the, um, this right here is the steady state one dimensional diffusion equation or steady state one dimensional heat conduction equation without a uh, generation term. Uh, and, and of course, constant um, diffusivity and constant conductivity, of course. And yeah, that's about it. I hope you guys found this video helpful. All right, see you guys next time.